Hello, welcome to Marine Gurukul video series. We are pleased to present Grain Stability Video 3, in which we shall try and take you through the stability requirements for ships carrying grain in bulk without document of authorization. Hope you have gone through our earlier two videos on grain stability, part one and two wherein the stability requirements for ships in possession of document of authorization were covered. In this video, we shall learn the stability requirements for ships without document of authorization carrying cargoes of bulk grain. A ship without document of authorization intending to carry cargo of bulk grain shall comply with the stability requirements as per either of the following sections of the grain code section a 3.5 or section a 9 what is section a 3.5 of the grain code as per section a 3.5 a ship without document of authorization shall not load grain until the master demonstrates to the satisfaction of the administration administration of the flag state or until the master demonstrates to the satisfaction of the administration of the contracting government of the port of loading acting on behalf of the flag state administration that in its loaded condition for the intended voyage the ship complies with the requirements of the grain code now which requirements are being referred to here of the grain code the requirements being referred to are the ones which were covered in our video one that means if a vessel without document of authorization can demonstrate to the competent authority that in its intended condition of loading or intended voyage the vessel shall comply with the requirements of the grain code she may be allowed to load grain in bulk to its full capacity however a big question arises here how does a ship without document of authorization or without an approved grain stability booklet demonstrate her compliance Please appreciate the onus of compliance demonstration is on master before such ships are allowed to load grain in bulk. A ship without DOA, there could be few hypothetical scenarios, may be in possession of an approved grain stability booklet, but may not be in possession of a DOA. Now, this approved grain stability booklet may not be from her current administration there might have been a change of flag she may have an approved grain stability booklet from the earlier approved from by the earlier administration and she may still not have received her document of authorization from the new flag administration now in such a case it may be easier for the master to demonstrate because he already has the calculated volumetric healing moments which would be captured in such a stability booklet second scenario could be that the ship does not have any grain stability booklet on board now in the absence of any approved grain stability on board challenge shall be calculation of the volumetric healing moments the detailed guidance on calculation of volumetric healing moments is given in part b of the grain code and part b of the grain code is titled calculation of assumed healing moments and general assumptions in case a vessel without doa can demonstrate compliance with the stability requirements can calculate the volumetric healing moments and demonstrate that the vessel shall be in compliance with the stability criteria which was discussed in video one 
she may be allowed to load grain in bulk. Needless to repeat, in such a case, demonstration of such compliance is going to be a challenge, but the court does provide this provision that if you are able to demonstrate, the you may be allowed to load grain as per the grain code. Section A9 of the grain code. Please read the title of section A9 very carefully. The title is Optional Stability Requirements for Ships Without Document of Authorization Carrying Partial Cargoes of Bulk Grain. Two words in this title are very important which sometimes in hurry are overlooked. The first one is optional. It's an optional criteria. It's an alternative criteria. What is the other option? Other option was what we just studied under section A3.5. So it's an alternative option. Does it apply to all ships? Well, it will apply to ships only if they are carrying or they intend carrying partial cargoes of bulk grain, not the full cargo. As per section A9, a ship not having a document of authorization issued in accordance with the applicable provisions of the grain code may be permitted to load bulk grain provided. So it's certain conditions need to be adhered to or it's subject to certain conditions. Number one, the total weight of bulk grain shall not exceed one third of the dead weight of the ship. That means it's only partial cargo. Total weight of the bulk grain shall not exceed one third of the dead weight of the vessel. All compartments filled and trimmed, that means filled compartments trimmed, shall be fitted with a center line division extending the full length of the hold downwards from the underside of the deck or the hatch covers to a distance below the deck line of at least one eighth of the maximum breadth of the compartment or 2.4 meters whichever is greater except that saucers constructed in accordance with the applicable provisions of the grain code may be accepted in lieu of the center line division in and beneath the hatchway. So saucers can be an alternative option in lieu of the center line division, but only beneath the hatchway. However, these saucers are not accepted in case of linseed and other seeds having similar properties. So two conditions we have studied here and we shall continue with some more conditions. So first condition was the total dead weight of the grain in bulk shall not be more than one third of the dead weight of the ship. Second is the requirement of center line divisions extending below the deck to a minimum of one eighth of the maximum breadth of the compartment or 2.4 meters, whichever is greater. We continue with the conditions uh, to which section A9 is subject to. All hatches to filled compartments trimmed shall be closed and covers secured in place. All free grain surfaces in partly filled cargo space shall be trimmed level and secured in accordance with the applicable provisions of the grain code, which are those applicable provisions, section A16, section A17, or section A18. Throughout the voyage, the metacentric height, that is GM, after correction of the free surface effect of the liquids in tanks, shall be 0 0.3 meters, or that, that is given by the formula that follows, whichever of the two is greater. So the GM of the vessel has to be 0.3 meters or the GM calculated by this formula, whichever of the two is greater. In this formula, 
L is the total combined length of full compartments in meters. SF is the stowage factor. Delta the displacement in tons. Capital B is the molded breadth in meters. VD is the calculated average void depth calculated in accordance with grain code section B1 in meters. So the, min, the GM initial of the vessel at all stages of the voyage shall be greater of the 2.3 or the GM as obtained by this formula on display. The master demonstrates to the satisfaction of the administration or the contracting government of, of the port of loading on behalf of the administration that the ship in its proposed loaded condition will comply with the requirements of this section A9. Now we come to end of this video. Hope you find it useful. If so, please like the video, share your comments, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. Thank you very much for watching Marine Gurukul video series. We are an online academy now. Our app is soon going to be up and all the material and courses shall be available to you on the app as well. Thank you once again.